And you can see, here they come. They're starting to make up ground on that outside line. Yeah, I, I don't think at Daytona, I, I, I've never really felt like it, one line was maybe better than the other. It just really did depend on who was in which line. Bob Dillner. Greg Biffle has climbed back in his race car. He's going to go back out in the draft. Now, I spoke to his crew chief, Matt Pusha, and I said, what did you fix? Whoa, said, well, trouble, trouble on the back. Trouble on the back once again. The All nine the cars. Ambrose goes around, as does the one. Jimmy McMurray, our reigning champion, Brad Keselowski, torn up. Regan Smith in the 51. Both the Pinsky Pinsky involved. 24, we're done. And, and Daryl, I don't know who it was, but somebody changed lines. Yeah, I, I saw and moving. there wasn't a hole there. I saw him moving back there. Somebody made a move, and there wasn't even more to go. Joey Logano's in it. We're hearing Eric Almarola potentially in this as well. This pack was growing 15 to 16 cars, and most were involved in this. But this is, this is what? This is why? Okay, this is why we haven't been doing a lot of drafting. Uh, this is the fear you have. And why do we have that fear? Because we usually get a reality. It could happen. It's always on the mind of the drivers and teams that this potentially could happen. Running at those speeds, just as you mentioned, DW, running at almost 200 miles an hour, inches apart, one person makes one little mistake, and this is the result. What did I tell you when this session started? It's going to they, they get these guys get a little more comfortable. They get a little bit more aggressive. They start to make a little bit more move. They start trying to be see where the car will fit in a Larry mentioned tight hole, but we got in there and this is what you end up with. Daryl, where do we normally though see the big wreck at Daytona? <laughs> right there where it happened. Coming off turn two. Yeah, I'm, I'm still writing driver numbers down, and I'm already up to about 10 or 11. Well, I think we said there were 19 cars in that pack, and i got to believe that about 15 of them were damaged. And, and, you know, old car, new car, whatever, that just simply was a misjudgment on some driver's part back there. A lot of damaged vehicles making their way back into the garage. Regan Smith in the 51 makes the hard left turn. You see Jeff Gordon in the 24 team. Yeah, Jeff got that car in. Fluid running out of his car. We saw the five of Casey Kane also sliding through the grass. Marcus Ambrose out of his race car taking a look. Disappointment on the faces of all the drivers as though, although they were elated to be able to go out and run with other cars, this is the result of a mistake. There's Casey Kane's number five. We're going to hook that back up to the tow truck and bring it back into the garage. The 14 of Tony Stewart looks like it got through unscathed. Biffle walking back to his hauler. Looks like the Stewart Haas two cars, the 14 and the 39, not involved. It's Larry and I are busy trying to exactly figure out what happened. We're gonna we're Let's gonna take, take a look a, here. Take a look at this and see if we can get an idea. You're gonna see the nine car come to the left. They're right in that area right there. Yeah, it, the nine car is gonna come to the left. The second car in line. And he's gonna get, I think, pushed or tapped from behind. Let's roll it here and see. You're gonna see the nine, and here he goes, but right there, he gets pushed into by... That's Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards, the 99. 99 car. Yeah. And because Marcus Ambrose was second in line, everyone behind him after that happens either checking up or trying to figure out the line through, and that caught up almost everyone. That was a... Oh, can we run that one right there? I think that told us more of a tale right there, what we just saw in that replay, I think Darryl. what I saw was when the 9 started to pull down, the 99 was going to go to the outside and fill the gap, and, uh, and he clipped him as it as goes by. A tighter view. Wow, look at all these cars. There's the 99. That could have been the 88 that was up there with I Dale Jr. it was. They're, They're all black yeah, primers it's, it's for the tell. It's hard to tell. We're going to take another look at that wider view of what took place there on the backstretch. Yeah. Here it is. That is Dale Hearn. Yeah, it is. Senior. It is. And you see what happens. The nine started to go 
to the inside, and Junior, I think, was going to go up the outside, and he clipped him in the right rear there and turned him. Yeah, it was Junior. It couldn't. The 99 and 88, yep. they look exactly the same. Car's getting caught up behind the nine of Marcus Ambrose sliding across the front. I think what happened there is the nine went down. Marcus went down to go to the to the inside, and Junior was going to run the outside and, and close the gap, and he just caught into the right rear of him. Let's go to the garage and Matt Yoko. Rick, Eric Almarola has driven his wounded uh, Ford back into the garage here. You've had a chance to look at the video. Walk us through what took place for you. Uh, I had actually just gotten in the draft about two hours before that. Uh, we came in and made some adjustments on our Smithfield Ford Fusion, and it was a lot better. So um, I'm not sure. Marcos, I see my teammate there get uh, get hooked. Uh, I can't see who that was. But anyway, it's looked like Dale Hart Jr. Yeah, um, it's just part of this kind of racing. We're out there in a big pack, and when something goes wrong at the front, we all end up in it. So. Um, Maybe the bad luck's out of the way before we come back here for Speed Week. You know, you never want to tear up race cars. That's no fun. But, um, you know, the bright side is is that the change we made was better, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll get this out of the way, and when we come back down here for Speed Week, uh, we won't be in that big one. Now, the 36 team had an issue this morning. They loaded up and went home. They only had one car here. What's your situation? I don't know. We, uh, we get a ride from Roush, so uh, I know the 99 was in the wreck as well, and our two cars were in the wreck, so... I don't know if we'll go home or if we'll wait for the other Roush teams to finish testing. So we'll just have to see. All right, thanks, Eric. Let's go across the garage here to Bob Dillner. Well, the champ, Brad Keselowski, checking out his Twitter feed after that incident. Uh, first of all, what did you see? I didn't see anything. I, I saw cars, uh, you know, smoke and wrecking in front of me. I think I ran in the back of the 43, and somebody ran in the back of me. And that's just that's just the way this deal is. So uh, it's unfortunate, you know, but, um, you know, sometimes you got to wreck them to learn. So. What did you learn out there today with this new car in the draft? Well, I think everyone's just, uh, the sport is rewinding. That's an important thing to say. Uh, because the sport advanced to where we got the two-car uh, tandem about three or four years ago. Uh, and there were certain things that you could do then that you could never do in the past without wrecking. And now the rules package has been changed back to where we were in the early 2000s, where I think the fans and everybody else enjoyed the racing a little better. And so as drivers, we have to rewind back to how we used to drive those cars um, and this is how you do it you, you know you learn and you make mistakes and uh, that's part of it but uh, you know I'll, I might be the guy that makes that mistake the next time so I can't really be mad about it but it's unfortunate there's torn up cars but uh, let's be honest it's January we got another month and a half to build them right and uh, I'm sure nobody in the field here is gonna race these cars anyway so we'll we'll build another one and have the uh, Miller Life Ford it's the first time I said that uh, back Good job. for the 500 Hey, Darrell Waldrop and Larry McReynolds, Rick Allen in the booth, are noticing that you guys aren't pulled up to each other's back bumpers. Can you not do it, or is it just not the faster way? Well, I mean, I think you can see from Dale you can do it, but I, we're all trying to learn the consequences, and nobody wants to be that guy. Uh, unfortunately, somebody has to be that guy, and uh, that's what it is. All right, Brad Keselowski, the champion. I want to look at his race car right here. You can see a significant amount of damage right here to the left rear quarter panel in the front fender as well. And then if we swing over here to the right rear as well, you can see they have that 200-mile-an-hour duct tape already holding on the rear tailpiece and the rear quarter panel. But this car is toast. It's done. It's the only one that the two team has available to test down here. And you know what? They don't have another one in the shop that's completely done either. One in production but it's still not done coming out of that shop there in North Carolina. We're counting 10 cars involved in this, and we've got to remind you that there's testing now in the Sprint Cup Series. So this obviously a big situation here at Daytona, but how does it impact Charlotte and the tests coming up? I mean, we've talked about very limited number of cars. You do something like this to a race car, how does that affect your year now? Well, it's the workload. Uh, you know, they're not going to run these cars at, uh, at, at Charlotte. They have your Charlotte cars, mile and a half cars, so it's not anything like this car, I'm thinking. But it's the workload. This would have been a great car to run in the uh, in the Unlimited. This would have right. been. Yeah. But I was going to ask you, Larry, where was the 48 car in all that mess? I can tell you where he was. He was about a half a lap behind them. Now you see him sitting in the garage area. Chad Canals, I talked to him yesterday. I said, Chad, with this new body style, do you plan on doing any drafting? Because ever since we started back testing in January, Chad Canals, Jimmy Johnson, they've never been in a draft. They, in fact, during speed weeks the last two right, or three they years, they've never been in a draft, and there she sits. 
pristine and clean, and his, ready to do a few more single car runs. His crew back home, they don't have to build another car now because this one is still good. Well, to Looking me, the, orga smart. the organizations that took a big hit there, Penske, two drivers, Richard Petty Motorsports, two drivers, and then Hendrick Motorsports with Jeff Gordon and Casey Kane, two drivers. So big hits, especially, I think, for Penske and Richard Petty Motorsports. We don't know the extent of the damage to the 88 either because, obviously, maybe a little front-end damage, but probably not too much. Nah, he's okay. he, was, he was up in front of all of the melee that took place. And yeah, normally you watch backup cars get unloaded from the haulers. They're not in the end there. <laughs> they can't unload there. There in isn't a backup car the to go to. The big one happens in Daytona Pre-Season Thunder.